We welcome you to our Thursday showcase at the hump in Starkville, Mississippi. A big time SEC matchup between number four South Carolina and number 21 Mississippi State. A couple of good friends going at it from the coach's box. As we welcome you inside our ESPN studios. Hey everybody, Ryan Rucco alongside the Hall of Famer Rebecca Lobo. So happy to be with you this Thursday night on ESPN. Rebecca, we saw Aaliyah Boston dominate as a freshman last year with South Carolina. But here she is as a sophomore, seemingly getting better. Yeah, dominating once again. And she's been able to be really effective on the offensive end of the floor, on both ends of the floor. She is one of the premier post players in the country. Affects the game on both ends. 6'5 with a 6'9 and a half wingspan. She doesn't need help defensively. She's averaging just under five blocks a game in SEC play. On the offensive end, she's extended her range out to the perimeter. Still a dominant force inside. Averaging 15 boards, or 15 points, 12 boards, and one wink a game, right? Well, last three games, <laughs> 21 points, 14 rebounds, six blocks, pretty good, and, and who knows how many winks. Now, <laughs> meanwhile, for Mississippi State, Rakia Jackson will not start tonight, Rebecca, but she is such a massive factor for this team. Yeah, she's another sophomore stud. She's leading Mississippi State in scoring at around 16 a game. She's a guard with great size and quickness who can drive by defenders or shoot over them. Her range extends out to three, and she is deadly in transition. And when she brings energy, watch out. Well, we mentioned that the coaches are an interesting matchup. You see what Rakia Jackson has done for Nikki McRae Penson so far this season. How about the relationship between Nikki and Dawn Staley? For that, we check in with Holly Rowe. That's right. Dawn Staley and Nikki McRae met when they were very young at USA Basketball, and they have been fast friends ever since. In fact, Dawn Staley, when she was rounding out her staff at South Carolina, hired Nikki McRae as an assistant coach, and she was there for nearly a decade. Nikki said that Dawn is one of her best friends in life. Every major moment in my life, Dawn has been there, whether it's meeting my husband, the second call I got when I found out I had cancer. They have been fast friends and very, very, very close. And we asked her what it's going to be like tonight going up against her former mentor and friend. And she said, it's going to be competitive. We would expect nothing less that the friendship goes out the window when they take on the court. They have faced off once before when Nikki McCray Penson was at Old Dominion in a closed scrimmage. But this will be the first time that these two women are coaching against each other in a regulation game. And I can't wait to see how competitive these two old friends get. Well, we can't wait either, Holly. You are watching the SEC on ESPN. South Carolina 12 and 1 on the season, 7 and 0 in the SEC. Mississippi State 8 and 4 on the season. They are 3 and 3 in conference. The 26 game SEC winning streak, the sixth longest in SEC history that South Carolina takes into this matchup. And this game is underway with South Carolina winning the tip. Saxton given a lot of space. Takes the jumper, can't hit, rebound secured by Jessica Carter. Mississippi State starting five, Maya Taylor, Madison Hayes, Jemiah Mingo Young, Sydney Cooks, and Jessica Carter as Rakia Jackson comes off the bench for Mississippi State. Layup won't go. Rebound taken away by Bree Beal, who's having a very nice season for South Carolina. South Carolina starting lineup, Zaya Cook, Destiny Henderson, Bree Beal, Victoria Saxton, and then Aaliyah Boston. Saxton, such a defensive force as well, sometimes doesn't get the shine because of Boston. As Boston traveled there, met a wall in the paint, and it was effective for Mississippi State. Yeah, both teams starting out in man-to-man -man defense, and Aaliyah Boston is going to get a ton of attention. Still look to score, but moved her feet, got the turnover. Okay. 
catch and fire from the wing is good. The three from Sydney Cook. She's shooting it at around 36% this season. And Mississippi State on the board. Free Beal, flung it up wildly, and it's going to stay here with South Carolina. Do you like when Brie Beal is aggressive, taking the ball to the basket? She is a big guard who can post up well and get looks inside. Saxton can't flag it down, and South Carolina turns it over. Two turnovers is not the start that Dawn Staley wanted for her team in this game. And on the offensive end for Mississippi State, they will look to run the dribble drive offense. Look for dribble penetration, kick back out for three. They'll take it to the basket if they get a clean look. Good hands there by Saxton to knock it away. You know, we were talking with Dawn Staley about South Carolina's defense, and she said this is probably the most committed defensive team she has ever coached. And she's got players who can really get after it, and it starts with their anchor inside. You can take a lot more risks when you have a shot blocker behind you who can clean up your messes. Cooks kicks, the three won't go from Hayes. The offensive rebound and put back. No good for Jessica Carter, and here comes South Carolina. Boston just ran over Carter, and that's going to be an early personal on Boston. Nikki McCray has to be happy because her defensive transition is very good on this last play. You have to get back against South Carolina. Carter right there to take the charge. Leah Boston's had games this year where she's gotten in foul trouble, picked up two in the first half, and Dawn Staley will put her on the bench when she does. Carter, faces up and hits. Jessica Carter coming off a game in which she had no field goals back on January 17th against Texas A&M. Just a two-point performance, but connects on a field goal early here. South Carolina yet to score. Nice box out from Carter there on the rebound. Two games ago against Alabama, Nikki McRae also in that game, as you see a block from Aaliyah Boston, did not start Rakia Jackson. And her team started like this. They had great energy to start the game. They were able to score, but did not end up winning that game. Mingo Young couldn't finish. Cook shoveled it off of Mississippi State. Out of bounds, and it's going to stay with South Carolina. How about Jessica Carter? Oh, she's got the tools. I mean, look at her, big and strong. She likes this right here. You'll see it from about 10 feet away. She likes the turn and the finish. Nikki McCray said, I want to get her a little bit lower in the block, a little more comfortable with the contact she's going to face. Anderson rims out. Saxton, the reverse is good. First bucket of the game for South Carolina. Yeah, Victoria Saxon has been steady all season for South Carolina. And a turnover here for Mississippi State. Anderson burning into the front court. Deflected backwards and Ami here unable to finish. Boston on the bench now for South Carolina as Mingo Young finishes. A 7-2 start for Mississippi State. Have not played since Jan 17th against Texas A&M as Bree Beal massages her way to the line. South Carolina in their last game was a really close game against LSU. And LSU was able to dictate the pace and slowed the game down until the second half where South Carolina was able to get the flow a little bit more. But it's a team, the Gamecocks, who really want to get up and down the floor, get out in transition. But Destiny Henderson pushed pace because she's one of the quickest guards in the country. See the numbers for Bree Beal and how much the shooting has improved this season. We were talking with Dawn Staley about Bree Beal, and she said she's predictable in a good way, just solid. And then said, you know, players, they want to score, of course, but now everything balancing out with both aspects of Beal's game, and nobody likes being the third or fourth option, but you end up realizing when you're the third or fourth option and you're winning, People notice you. It stands out, and Bree Beal has started to notice that. 
she won her starting position as a freshman because of what she brought on the defensive end. And here you see South Carolina playing a zone defense. They went to a zone late in the LSU game as well. They do not play a lot of zone. How about the effort from Saxton to save it and Henderson finishes in transition. That's where Henderson is so good. So fast with the basketball in her hands. Averaging 12 and a half points per game, leads the SEC in assists, just under six per contest. He's able to save it. Shot clock at 10. Carter catching it further away from the hoop. The spin left it short. Offensive rebound and put back. Won't go for Rakia Jackson. Now Mississippi State nearly causing the turnover. As Henderson will get it across the timeline. The old corner three rims off and an offensive rebound. Won't happen for South Carolina as the loose ball foul is called against the here. Yeah, South Carolina is so good turning defense into offense. And if you turn the basketball over, watch out, especially if Destiny Henderson has the ball in her hands. So quick, makes good decisions going the other way. Is it? Great job by Rakia Jackson, the last possession. We talked about it. She didn't get the start in this game. So what do you do? You get going by getting to the offensive glass. A couple games ago, it was her energy in practice that Nikki McRae was questioning the reason that she didn't start her in that game. You need to bring it. Jackson guarded by Beal. On the attack, the fling is no good from Atharu, and now a foul in transition against Mississippi State. We'll step aside, 4.31 to go in the first. Mississippi State, a one-point lead. We'll have a full day of college hoops on Saturday, but how about Monday? NC State in Louisville, number one, number two. We know that's gonna change for NC State after losing to Virginia Tech, but it's a big time matchup between Louisville and NC State. And speaking of big time matchups, we have two going on right now. South Carolina, Mississippi State, the game we're calling. Then how about over on ESPN2, Arkansas, a nine point lead on UConn. UConn undefeated entering this game. Holly Rowe, because she does it all. She was on the first half of that game, is now on our game. Holly, how about your observations, what you've seen from UConn, Arkansas tonight? Well, right now, Paige Becker is playing with that sore ankle, so that's important for UConn, but they cannot stop Arkansas's Chelsea Dungy, one of the most exciting players in the country. She's got 25 points already in three quarters. Three Arkansas players in double figures, a very exciting game on ESPN2. This is, you know, Holly's She's everywhere. <laughs> She's everywhere. She really is. <laughs> sort of like a dream come true. <laughs> it's finally happened. That's right. You see the top four teams in the AP poll. As of Monday, South Carolina number four. You would think would move up maybe to as high as second if UConn ends up losing to Arkansas now that NC State has lost to Virginia Tech. A lot of shakeup going on right now, Rebecca Lobo. There's a lot of shakeup. <laughs> on the drive, bucket won't go from Zaria Wiggins, but she is fouled, and Wiggins will shoot two. The reset in the game for South Carolina. She was a real difference maker in the fourth quarter in their LSU game, came in, brought a lot of energy. Dawn Stale has gone to her bench a lot here in the first quarter, looking like she's looking for some answers to get energy and to get some production, especially on the offensive end where they're only shooting 25%. Tip off your weekend with some of the NBA's biggest stars on ESPN and the app. Giannis and the Bucks take on Zion and the Pelicans at 7.30 Eastern, 6.30 Central. I'll have that game. Then Rudy Gobert and the Jazz, they won 10 straight. Now they lead the West, they square off against Luka and the Mavs. Our NBA Friday coverage starts with NBA Countdown at 7 Eastern. Layup drops in for Zaya Cook around a nice screen. Able to put South Carolina in front. It's really important for South Carolina, for Zaya Cook to get going on the offensive end. When they came out of the last timeout, that's where Dawn Staley went. She wasn't able to score, but able to get the dribble drive going on the last possession. Jackson tosses it out. The three won't go for Mutharu. 
Here comes Henderson flinging ahead. There's Cook, lost it. Loose ball, ends up back with South Carolina. Aaliyah Boston still on the bench. She picked up two fouls in the first quarter of their game against Kentucky, and Dawn Staley sat her the rest of the half, and you wonder here if she's just gonna <laughs> give her a little extra time in this first quarter so at least she knows she can have her for some minutes in the second. Yeah, just one foul, but did have two turnovers as the flip goes down. Aaliyah Matharu finishes. You see Boston with no points in the three minutes of action before checking out. Cook had it stripped from behind. Loose ball couldn't be cleaned up by Saxton. And Jackson has it for Mississippi State. Rakia Jackson evades two, scoops it up and off. Would have been a pretty finish. Now Beal. Beal looking to go coast to coast, and that's going to be a charge. Position established by Aaliyah Mo Motharu, and Beal gets called for the charge. It's a couple times now you've seen Mississippi State players step in and take a charge. Here it's Motharu. Earlier we saw Carter take the charge against Aaliyah Boston, willing to give up their body. And six turnovers in this first quarter for South Carolina. Mississippi State, a one-point lead. South Carolina has won 20 straight road games. They've won 26 straight SEC games. Good tie up there from Cook. It'll stay with Mississippi State as they have the possession arrow, but a nice effort from Zaya Cook. And that's one of those dribble drives that won't be there if Aaliyah Boston's in the game because she's so long and can cover ground and such a good shot blocker. Jackson dishes. Taylor can hit the three. Jackson the offensive rebound. Bodies in, can't finish. Another chance here on the reverse won't go. The tip is good from Carter. And even though Jackson wasn't able to convert, that's great energy on that possession. The way she was attacking the offensive glass, the way she stayed with it even when her shot didn't go in. And you're going up against the number one rebounding team in the country, too, in South Carolina. But Mississippi State, monsters in the paint. They outscore teams by an average of 19.7 points in the paint per game. Mingo Young couldn't finish. Carter kept it alive, but the battle is won by Saxton for South Carolina. Kansas, Tennessee, Saturday, 6 Eastern on ESPN. A couple of top 18 teams. Ten to shoot. Saxton was backed off of by Carter. Henderson a little hezzy. The kick. Three to shoot. Cook puts it up. Can't get it to go. Rebound Carter. That was a really good defensive possession for Mississippi State. First 6-4 big Sydney Cook stepped out on, on the on-ball action and then Carter was able to hold her own as well. Really nice job by the bigs. Six rebounds in the quarter from Carter. Nine to shoot. Jackson. Four to shoot. Jackson gives it up and just threw it away. No rhythm on that possession. Opportunity in transmission, in transition, and the layup goes down for South Carolina. We've had lots of opportunities with transmission as well during the <laughs> pandemic. That'll do it for the end of the first quarter. Mississippi State a one-point lead. How about Jessica Carter? on the interior in this first quarter. Yeah, 6-5 and a big presence inside. Going after it. Well, we will have a full day of college hoops Saturday culminating with these two SEC Big 12 Challenge games on ESPN and the app. Number 15, Kansas squares off against number 18, Tennessee in Knoxville at 6 Eastern, 5 Central. Then he had to Rupp Arena for number 5, Texas and Kentucky, who've only met twice in their storied history. Both Wildcat wins, 1993 and 2014. Both games are Sonic blockbusters.
But can I also interest you in what I think will be another very fascinating game in the SEC Big 12 Challenge? It is Auburn at Baylor. Sharif Cooper is the most exciting freshman in the country right now for Auburn basketball. He's going back to play at Baylor where his sister, Taya Cooper, played last year for Baylor. Taya tweeted at me and said she will be at the game to cheer on little brother Sharif. I love it. Yes, you can interest us I'm in that interested. game as well, Holly. And you have. There you go. <laughs> Zaya Cook, three of five to start. That's a good sign for South Carolina. She has really struggled shooting the basketball of late. As Madison Hayes coughs it up. Henderson fending off in transition, and Maya Taylor is going to get hit with the personal. Rebecca, for Mississippi State, you know, they had a lead at the end of the first quarter against the South Carolina team that's really been playing well. And obviously Mississippi State has had its struggles early in the season. But they also didn't have Aaliyah Boston on the floor for much of that first quarter. Do you feel like Mississippi State took advantage enough as Cook hits again with Boston out in that first for as much as she was? Well, I thought they did a really nice job on the defensive end of the floor in particular. They got to the offensive glass, offensive boards. They probably would not have gotten if Boston had been in the game. I mean, they're getting good looks. And of course, they would want to be converting them. Good decision by Cook. Gets it back. Can hit the three. Rebound saved by Jackson. Controlled by Mississippi State. Knocked out of bounds. Last hit the foot of South Carolina. And it's going to be Mississippi State basketball. Always like Dawn Staley's fashion, too, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's bringing it. Is she wearing a designer mask? It might be. I think so. I think it is. Carter couldn't finish on the interior. Boston the rebound. But smart to attack Boston and see if maybe you can pick up a second foul. Cook gets fouled and will go to the line. Zaya Cook has been very aggressive. Eight points in the early going and a chance to add more here, Holly. And this has got to be great for Don Staley and South Carolina. Zaya Cook has had a little bit of a stretch where she's str st struggled to score, much like I'm struggling to speak right there. She has really grown in a lot of different areas this year, but when her scoring was down, she started pressing and not playing with great confidence. Don said, you know, when we lost some of our great seniors, Ty Harris, Kiki Herbert Harrigan last year, she kind of just thought, it's my turn now. Well, her turn has to come with growth and making things happen on the court. And the last couple of games against LSU and then tonight, I feel like Zaya has finally stopped pressing and really just started playing that confident, aggressive brand of basketball we're used to from her. It don't say they're saying we're looking for her to have more direct line drives and not just settle for three-point shots. And early in the season, the game was just coming to her. It was feeling easy. And this happens to a lot of players, especially when your shot goes away. You overthink and you have a hard time getting back in the groove. The best way is to just focus on the other things that you can do. Kind of a wild attempt there from Mitharu. It sets up this opportunity. Henderson unable to hit. Boston just gobbled it up and put it home. It's like the ball stuck to her hand like a magnet. She just pulled that down with other players surrounding her. That was going to be Aaliyah Boston's rebound and bucket, no matter what. Well, coming up on the Jeep Halftime Report, we are going to be dissecting this UConn-Arkansas game, which is currently going on on ESPN2. A one-point game, Arkansas in front of undefeated UConn. Plus, a major upset in the ACC tonight as well. That's all coming up on the Jeep Halftime Report with Sue Bird, Coach Andy Landers. Meanwhile, South Carolina here is on a 10-0 run. They have a seven-point lead on Mississippi State. Ryan Rucco, Rebecca Lobo, Holly Rowe with you. Holly was also a part of that game on ESPN2, which incredibly tight between UConn and Arkansas down the stretch. 
That time Mississippi State really worked their dribble drive side to side, back and forth, got a really good shot out of it. They've got to be able to convert. And a 12-0 run here for South Carolina. They have matched their point total from the first quarter already here in the second. 14 of South Carolina's 20 points have come in the paint. They've done a really good job off the dribble drive. Wiggins spinning into the lane, traveled as she did. Great job on the screen and roll. Reset sets it and rolls. Cook delivers. See Cook involved in the action. That's another adjustment Don Staley made in their last game against LSU in the fourth quarter. In the second half, she had her playing more on ball as the point guard, initiating getting other people involved, instead of just waiting for the ball to come to her, looking for shots. Cook with 10 points to lead all scorers thus far. Patient possession here from South Carolina, and they turn it over. Maya Taylor with South Carolina back. Taylor finds Carter, and Carter just couldn't grab it. Looked to be a good delivery from Taylor, and on the other end, an easy bucket for Lily Grissett, who had a big fourth quarter against LSU last time out for South Carolina. Don Staley has been looking for more out of her bench, and this is the second game in a row. Grissett's been the one to provide it. Jackson gets that to go, finally ending the 14-0 South Carolina run. That's where she can be so good. As a guard at 6-2, she's strong. She can take it in and shoot over you. And a foul call there against Mingo Young. Hey, Sunday, we have another afternoon of women's basketball when 12-2 Alabama squares off against this number four South Carolina squad. Then, number 22 Georgia, is in College Station to take on number eight, Texas A&M. All games right here on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. Cook had to readjust in the air. How about Boston with that one-handed rebound? Fighting off a face guard and the foul is called. She's just really good at pursuing the basketball. And you hear people talk about going and getting a rebound out of your area. This is out of her area. The ball goes up, eyes are on the rim. Like, I don't care what's clinging to me. I'm just going to go and get the ball. Aaliyah Boston, last year's National Freshman of the Year, the first in South Carolina's history. Off to a terrific start to this season as Henderson shuffled the feet and South Carolina gets it back to Mississippi State. Well, guys, you're talking about Aaliyah Boston rebounding out of her area. Based on the data from the player heart monitors on South Carolina, she covers more ground in a game than anyone else in the team. And as the season's developed, that data shows that she's doing it more efficiently. So she is all over the court, and they can prove it. Cook hits the three and a much welcome sign for South Carolina. You know, interestingly, just to tag that story from Holly, Boston has also lost significant body fat percentage since coming to camp. Has lost about eight pounds as well, at least. That's going to be updated at some point in the near future when they reevaluate. So Boston has gotten in better and better shape as the season's gone along as well. Yeah, and, and that's one of the reasons her numbers have improved as the season has gone on. 10-point South Carolina lead. Cook has 13 in his first half for South Carolina. That three is good for Maya Taylor and one that Mississippi State needed. Yeah, they can be really good in their transition when they bring it down and kick it out to open three-point shooters. Shooting more threes this season under Nikki McRae fencing. The runner banks off, rebound secured by Mississippi State. Here comes Jemiah Mingo Young. Taylor through the left side of the lane, traveled. And another turnover from Mississippi State. That's gonna be their ninth to match South Carolina's nine. Neither of these teams on the season, high turnover teams, Mississippi State under 14 a game. Same thing for 
South Carolina, but there's been a lot of miscues here so far. Both teams with nine. Henderson back to Cook. Cook had averaged just 10 points per game over the last five, was shooting under 40%, was one of 11 from three, but has broken out today as Beal gets fouled, and Bree Beal is gonna shoot two. We talked about it earlier, but a luxury to have a guard with that kind of size. Bree Beal at 6'1", sometimes Dawn Staley uses her to post up smaller guards, but when she gets a step on you and gets by you, she can get to the free throw line, and it helps to be able to see over the smaller defender. Is it odd to you how poorly she shot from the free throw line? It's just strange when you see a player who's shooting over 40% from three, shooting under 50% from the line. Especially when they have a stroke that looks good. Yeah. Right, if they were sort of, you know, throwing it up with the back of their hands at the line, it'd make a little more <laughs> well, sense. You know, sometimes bigs in particular have a funky looking yeah. stroke. She's got a good looking stroke. Very good looking stroke. I wonder if she missed a few early and it got in the head a little bit. We'll see what happens as the season goes along. Cook a little too strong on her three-point attempt. Opportunity here for Mississippi State. They led by one after one. Just three and three thus far in SEC play. Jackson kicks on the attack. Hayes gets denied emphatically. Henderson flips it up and in in transition. Victoria Saxon was the one with the monster block. She's averaging just under two blocks a game. She in Boston, the reason South Carolina leads the nation in blocks. Good hands by Beal, another chance here for Mississippi State. Jackson looking into Carter. Taylor will get it to her. Carter facing up, puts it in. You see that Jessica Carter likes to do the face-up or the turnaround. She does not want to just bury you in the post and score over her shoulder. But with 6'5", Aaliyah Boston on her, I can understand why. South Carolina had looked like they were going to really separate. Mississippi State has done a nice job hanging around since that 14-0 run. Beal left it short, got it back, and able to finish. No one from Mississippi State able to get their paws on that board. Taylor through the lane, got fouled. Maya Taylor is going to shoot two. Victoria Saxton with a long, nice block on one end of the floor. And then here, Carter putting it up. Yeah, I'd probably face up Boston, too. I don't know that I'd post her up and take it at her. Aya Taylor, fifth in the country in assist to turnover ratio, misses the first free throw. Mississippi State struggled from the line on the season, only shooting 65%, but it has been better in SEC games. They were over 70%. All over women's college basketball, it seems, free throw shooting is just worse than it's ever been. Why do you think that is? I have no idea. But I, I don't have the analytics to support that. I will get them. <laughs> but I, just watching, like, it used to be money when, when women's basketball players went to the free throw line. And this year, you're seeing a lot of teams struggle. You're going to be having her hoop stats on the email. You better believe at it. At halftime. Good position there from Aaliyah Boston, able to finish. The lead is 11 for South Carolina. That, um... 64.9% for Mississippi State, by the way, 273rd in Division I. Jackson, good footwork, just couldn't finish. Rebound scraped away by Mitharu. Catching fire from the wing, won't go for Mingo Young. 
And another chance in transition again for South Carolina. They have been running off Mississippi State misses. Yeah, they are so good. They look to push pace, whether it's on block shots or miss shots. They are going the other way. The lead is swelled to 13 for South Carolina. Mississippi State shooting a paltry 27% from the floor. And that layup goes for Mathoru as a timeout is taken with 42.8 to go in this second quarter. South Carolina by 11. South Carolina excels on the offensive end of the floor when they can get a stop and go the other way in transition. Are we already with 15 fast break points? Look how they move the basketball without dribbling. Just quick pass, another quick pass and finish inside. They have not gotten the dominant numbers or even the heavy minutes from Aaliyah Boston in this first half. But Zaya Cook has found her stroke and just little chipping from everybody else involved in South Carolina's well-balanced lineup. Saxton can't lay it in. Boston finally finishes. That's three or four offensive rebounds on that possession. It, it was, was a lot. It was at least three. Want to call it three and a half? <laughs> it was a lot. We'll go to the scores table for the official judging. But it was a lot. South Carolina first in overall rebounding. Their third in rebounding margin in Division One, Average 18 offensive rebounds a game. You have to box them out if you want to beat them. Mingo Young can't finish. Boston the rebound. That'll do it for the first half. South Carolina, a 36-23 lead. A big second quarter from South Carolina. After they trail by one, after one, they put up 26 in the second. How about holding Mississippi State to 29% shooting? in this first half. South Carolina with a 13-point lead over Mississippi State after two quarters of play as Nikki McCray Penson goes up against her good friend Dawn Staley and we send things over to Holly Rowe. Well, Coach McCray Penson, Holly Rowe here. Can you hear me okay, Coach? I can. Okay. Yes, ma'am. So transition yes. defense is something that you had really been preaching with your team that they had to improve. What has to change right now because South Carolina mm -hmm. really running off of your misses? Well, I think we're getting shots at the rim. Um, we're not making them. Uh, we're like off balance. We knew their size is something that's problematic, but we worked on pump faking and being under control. And when you miss those shots, you got to get back. We, we talked about having three back, so we're not getting back with the people that we need to get back to slow them down. But again, I mean, I like our shots at the rim. We just got to make shots at the rim. Coach, uh, Rakia Jackson coming off the bench tonight. What are the reasons for that? She's been good in her minutes that she has played. Yeah, it's, no, it's nothing. There is no reason. Um, again, I was very proud of Rakia. She came in, gave great effort. Awesome. Thank you so much, Coach. All right, Holly. Thank you. All right, Coach McCray Penson, a 13 point South Carolina lead at the half. The Jeep Halftime Report with Sue Bird, Coach Andy Lander, is coming up next here on ESPN. Welcome back to Thursday Showcase on ESPN. You're watching the SEC on ESPN in Starkville, Mississippi. Getting ready for the second half between South Carolina and Mississippi State. But how about this? Look at the top four teams in the country, NC State and UConn, both losing tonight their first losses of the season as we welcome you back inside our ESPN studios. Hey again, everybody, Ryan Rucco along with the Hall of Famer, Rebecca Lobo. Rebecca, first quarter, Mississippi State grinded out quarter, had a lead. Second quarter, South Carolina able to put up 26 points. 
build a cushion and they use their transition to do so. Yeah, that's what they do. They, they get you to turn the ball over or they get defensive boards or block shots and they can so quickly go from defense to offense. Quick outlet, a couple of dribbles, pass, pass again and under just over five seconds able to go end to end and score. This is where South Carolina really thrives. Destiny Henderson, we've talked about it, one of the fastest in the game with the ball in her hands and then the lead pass. Lily Grissett finishing on that end as well. If you want to beat South Carolina, you cannot let them run. Let's check in with the third member of our broadcast team, Holly Rowe. Well, you heard us talk to coach Nikki McCray Penson about that before the half. And it's really this simple is when they defend, they win in the SEC. Look at this points per game in their losses. They only allowed 67 points per game, but in the wins, much greater at over 80. They have to lock down and defend. And the players I spoke to this week said, Coach has shown us these stats. We know that when we defend, we can win. They've got to make a more concerted effort to great defense here in the second half. And you know, Holly, of course, it's a lot easier to get back in defensive position when you make your shots, as Maya Taylor did on their first possession right there. They shot 29% Mississippi State did in that first half, so they were constantly in scramble mode. Henderson pedals it out. Gets it into Beal. Beal turns the corner. Got the foul. She almost put herself in at an impossible angle to finish, but was still able to draw the whistle. She did a good job, though. Good job so far of getting into the paint, getting fouled, getting to the free throw line. Three for four so far from the line. This is a good one for her tonight, Ryan. The percentages are rising. Well, you know what we just did. I know, but come on, that was like rattled, touched every part of the rim before it burped back out. <laughs> burped? Yeah, it looked like, right? Yeah. There we go. And that one burped in? Yes, it did. All right, I can roll with it. I love it when you give me these <laughs> full of imagery <laughs> verbs that we can <laughs> integrate into the broadcast. Another turnover for Mississippi State and more points in transition as Saxton finishes. You just can't do it. I mean, they, South Carolina is so, so good. And they can just get it and go. They're a plus 12 in fast break points. That's essentially your difference on the scoreboard. Carter can't finish. Kept alive by Hayes. Taylor squeezes it in traffic to Carter. Hayes, another offensive rebound. An outstanding effort from Madison Hayes, the freshman, on that possession to give Mississippi State multiple shots. Not only multiple shots, but that puts another foul on Aaliyah Boston. Didn't look like a whole lot of contact to me, but it's still her second foul. Madison Hayes. Freshman out of Chattanooga, Tennessee. Was the Tennessee Gatorade Player of the Year. A McDonald's All-American a season ago and the number 28 recruit in the country. Oh. It's the first year for Nikki McRae Penson at the helm of Mississippi State. After three years as the head coach of Old Dominion, following 10 seasons as an assistant with Don Staley at South Carolina. Here comes Taylor. Hit by Boston, kicks to the corner, the three won't go. Another offensive rebound for Mississippi State. Another missed three. Mississippi State three of nine, South Carolina one of eight. Beal the Euro step, couldn't cup it in. And the rebound secured by Sidney Cooks. Taylor, three on two, feeds Carter, who swivels and finishes. Jessica Carter now with eight points for Mississippi State. This game has been seesawing between nine and 12 points as far as the lead goes for South Carolina. Taya Cook got a whistle and will go back to the line. 
probably won't talk about it in the first half, but so important for Zaya Cook, just in terms of her confidence, to have one of these games where she's been able to hit from the perimeter. She's had success penetrating into the lane as well. She started the season scoring so well for South Carolina. Well, this See, is what you're talking about. Yeah, the last five games have been a bit of a struggle, and it was funny when we were talking to Don Staley. And, and, Holly asked her, she's like, it was good to see Zaya break out of her, of her uh, slump. And Don said, when'd she break out? <laughs> but now you can ask her that question after this game, and you can pinpoint this game against Mississippi State. Well, and, and she was talking, Dawn was talking about Zaya, and she said, you know, she's in a rut where nothing is going right in the area where she loves the game the most, which is to score. Right. And, and those are tough rocks. And those are the times where you just have to do other things. You have to defend, get steals right here, get out and transition, make passes. Feeling, feeling involved without scoring is a powerful thing on the basketball court. It's going to stay right here. Another good effort on the glass from South Carolina. They are a plus seven rebounding at the moment. They have out-rebounded their opponents in every single game this season. And that's going to be the third foul on Sydney Crooks, who will check out for Mississippi State. Boston will fire. No. Rebound taken by Matharu. Matharu stops at the block. Mississippi State trying to find some sort of offensive rhythm. Nine to shoot. Hayes fading away, met by Boston, swats it to the floor and owns the paint. That was great defense by Boston. She anticipated what Hayes was going to do so she could be there. How about that big girl? Nearly finished it. Saxton gets fouled by Hayes. Victoria Saxton has had her fingerprints all over this game. And she'll shoot two. Aaliyah Boston on the defensive end of the floor. When you block shots, it's generally not on your player. You're coming over on help side. She did a great job of reading. That the spin was coming. She got there, blocked it, then handled the other way. Three blocks in this game for Boston. There's Saxton now with seven points. When you're looking at Boston right there, and even though she's not scoring as much tonight as she normally does, she's still impacting the game with nine rebounds and three blocks. Coaches talk about how intuitive that she is. Like, often she's the one directing traffic on the floor. She knows what the guards are supposed to be doing. She just feels the game, and it's so beautiful to watch how natural it comes to her, impacting the game whether she's scoring or not. It was interesting, it was interesting to hear Dawn Staley say it's like having a point guard yeah. in a position. That's how much she trusts the decision making. And we also need to say this, Holly. The hair is popping as Aaliyah told you when the hair is popping then you're popping yes she loves that colorful hair she's always had it ever since she started out as a freshman and she's changed it she started out with really bright blue locks earlier this year and she changed it to kind of a rainbow right now and i love it she thinks it's the best hair in america and i can't i can't disagree with that <laughs> i just love the overall philosophy it's like the hair's popping, the game's popping. You're good to go. Exactly. How do you feel about that as a bald man? You know, I feel like for me it's more like if the shine is popping, <laughs> then the voice is popping. Okay. And if the voice is popping, that's all that that's matters. That's all that matters. That's all that matters. That's right. Is the shine popping? It's popping. It's popping a little bit, you know. Greatest decision I ever made in my life, though. <laughs> Boston will fire a three. Missed that one badly. Rebound taken by Cooks, who is back in with three fouls for Mississippi State. 
The floater is good for Jackson, and boy, could Mississippi State use that. And could she use that, you know? Nikki mccray Penson talked to Holly at the half, and well, we gotta make our shots that are close to the rim because they got some good ones in the first half, couldn't get them to fall. And another foul here will put South Carolina back at the line. We'll step aside, 12-point game, third quarter action. I was the first girl to play football from my city. So I played quarterback, running back, wide receiver, and I also played safety. They thought I did some very special things, and uh, they decided to retire my jersey. I think football actually helped me a lot when it comes to basketball. Well, Zaya Cook grew up in Toledo, Ohio, and uh, you can see how football has helped her on the basketball court. She's aggressive, she's confident, she's got great hand-eye coordination that she really credits to football, and I love the story of how she started playing football. Her mom, Michelle, said absolutely not, but her brother was playing and he was practicing and Dad Stratman bought her some cleats, kind of sneaked her on and said she was going to cheerleading practice. But when she came home in very dirty clothes, mom figured out that she was playing football and I think it's really helped her athletic prowess. Really nice details from a, a good post and courier story. Uh, I, I love those details, Holly. And I also love what we heard from Nikki McRae Penson talking about Zaya Cook, who was a player who she recruited when she was a part of South Carolina's staff and said, you know, the thing that stood out most to her was she was just so confident. You could tell right away she said, I want to be a pro. She was a chim rat and just loved the game. And the first visit she took was in eighth grade, came down while Dawn Staley was actually at USA Basketball. So it was Nikki McRae Penson who showed Zaya Cook around. And now Nikki coaching against her tonight and probably wishing that Zaya was a little more off this evening. <laughs> Lead is up to 16 for South Carolina. Jackson, and that's out of bounds. Just was not caught by Morris. Jemaya Morris getting some time here in this third. A 47-31 workmanlike lead for South Carolina. Be here, can't finish. Comes Maya Taylor. Taylor accelerates into the lane, waits and gets the foul against Beal as Cook went storming by. And Taylor's gonna shoot too. I love the little pump fake because especially when you're a smaller player, everybody is looking to block your shot. And you, if you know that and you pump fake them, the defender will leave her feet. For a little more on Maya Taylor, let's check back in with Holly. Well, Maya Taylor is a terrific athlete. She actually grew up playing several sports before she started focusing on basketball exclusively. She was a great softball player. In fact, she started playing at a young age in middle school. She was on softball and basketball. And when she was a seventh grader, she was so good at softball that she actually was on the high school softball team as a seventh grader. So love this little athlete. You can see how quick and great she moves on the court. And it's fun to see somebody with great softball. I hope Co Coach Ricketts there at Mississippi State gets her to try out at some point. I think she'd be a great addition to the softball team there for Hill State. Why not? Go to sports. I love the photos, too. Yeah. I wonder about how many random childhood athletic photos Holly Rowe has in her phone. <laughs> Different athletes over the years. A lot. I used to love when Holly would pull out the, the Lindsey Whalen hockey photos as a child. <laughs> I actually I have some Ryan Rucco childhood photos in my phone. Do you really? I do. I'll send it to you right now. <laughs> Lily Grissett hits the first free throw. South Carolina, significant edge at the line as well. Mississippi State just three of eight in this game. And South Carolina is now 14 of 16 from the line. Carter back in. Mississippi State just has not found any kind of offense rhythm all game as Cooks 
hits the fall away. The transfer from Michigan State sat out last year. Zaya Cook speeds inside, couldn't finish off the window. Carter secures the rebound. Taylor, eyes up. Wiggling through the lane, finds the cutter. It's Jackson for two. Really good job with the dribble penetration and then the fill behind by Jackson. This is the time here, especially again without Boston on the floor. Maybe Mississippi State can make a push to end the third quarter. Mississippi State has hit its last three field goals. South Carolina won for their last 10. They've done their damage at the line. Ami here spinning, can't finish. Got it back, couldn't finish again. Another chance here for South Carolina. But no, we have a timeout. A timeout is taken. South Carolina will calm things down, leading by 13 with under two to go in the third. Well, earlier tonight over on ESPN2, Destiny Slocum, Chelsea Dungy, and Arkansas built an eight-point lead late in the fourth. Paige Beckers and UConn with Kristen Williams come storming back. A one-possession game, a final shot here for Avina Westbrook. Rims out, and Arkansas hands UConn its first loss of the season, 90-87, to the final. And now Louisville, the only remaining undefeated team in that AP Top 25, see the top four. NC State, UConn both lose tonight, Rebecca. I mean, this is a time of year where games become a grind. This past Sunday, Louisville had to come from behind to beat Wake Forest. NC State came from behind to beat Virginia Tech and then ended up losing to the same team tonight. South Carolina came from behind to beat LSU. This is just the time of year where those conference battles become so tough. And a monster performance tonight from Chelsea Dungy for Arkansas, Holly. That's right, 37 points for Chelsea Dungy of the Arkansas Razorbacks, 13 of 21 from the field. And I just wanted to give a big shout out to her because coming into the season, she has lost 35 pounds. She told her coach, I want to be someone who is consistent and you can rely on every single day. First time in school history that they have knocked off UConn and Chelsea Dungy, she willed this into existence by the dedication and focus she put into this season. I mean, that is a massive amount of weight to lose and the dedication incredible and also fighting through a blister that a national TV audience got to see for far too long a period of time a couple of games ago thanks to Holly Rowe. So yeah, pretty incredible what Chelsea Dungy is doing. While Jackson started to get going a little bit here for Mississippi State, they're still within striking distance. Every time it seems like South Carolina is going to run away and hide, Mississippi State has fought back to make it more manageable. A stop and a score here could get it to single digits before the fourth. That won't happen as Saxton finishes plus the foul. Victoria Saxton has been an underrated player for South Carolina all season long. She comes in, she's consistent, she is very good on the defensive end of the floor. You see her here with 10 points tonight, nine rebounds. She just quietly goes about her business consistently. Completes the three-point play. And I think Victoria Saxton has the greatest compliment from any coach I've ever heard. Don Staley said she's low maintenance, high performance. It is the absolute best compliment. She's got a 29 inch vertical. She can touch 10 feet to jump, but she's very comfortable in her own skin. She gets it. She's a captain. She's a motherly figure on this team. And she does so much for South Carolina. I love that from Don Staley. Low maintenance, high performance. That's what every person in your life should be. Yeah. Really, otherwise you want them out. <laughs> you can only have but a couple high maintenance, high performance people. <laughs> high maintenance, low performance, you're done. You're done, you got no shot. <laughs> no shot. Jackson finding herself. Yeah. Uh, the last couple of minutes of this quarter and man 
because of her explosiveness and potential on the offensive end, Mississippi State will need her in the fourth. Nine points in the quarter for Jackson. Anderson looking for an angle. And nearly got it to go. But that will do it for the third. A 13-point South Carolina lead. Fourth quarter coming up. Mississippi State, South Carolina, and South Carolina with a 13-point lead in Starksville. Zaya Cook breaking out tonight, 17 points, 5 of 13 shooting. Victoria Saxton, 11 points, 4 of 7 from the floor. Ryan Rucco, Rebecca Lobo, Holly Rowe with you. Appreciate you hanging out with us for our Thursday showcase here on ESPN. Nice delivery of me here. Finding Grissett for the finish. Be here, one of those players off the bench who um, needs to find her confidence. And uh, she's been getting some extended minutes in this game. I thought it was interesting at the end of the third quarter. Don Staley left Aaliyah Boston on the bench for a while and, and not in foul trouble. You just get the sense that she's like, all right, who else can be my voice out there? Who else can be the anchor? Who else can hold it down if I don't have Boston out on the floor? South Carolina did a good job of it. And a team with championship aspirations can make those kind of decisions, right? Yeah. Where you're going to sort of give your team a little bit of a trial run within certain games. And especially because Boston has had games where she's gotten into foul trouble. The other players have to learn how to play and succeed when she's not on the floor. Boston goes to the ground to grab it, and a jump ball is called Mississippi State with the possession arrow. Rebecca, how does Mississippi State get any kind of consistency from their offense in this game? Well, they got to get stops on the defensive end of the floor. We've seen that they can be very good when they get out in transition and get Jackson some more touches. Coach Landers just handed me the note. She's four of four in this half, so she's performed much better since her one for seven start in the first 20 minutes. Hayes dishes out. Mingo Young on the attack. How about Carter? Rims off. It's one of those shots that Nikki McCray Penson was talking about. Holly, good look in close, didn't finish. Meanwhile, Ami here does finish, plus the foul. 17 fast break points now for South Carolina. You just simply have to get back in terms of defensive transition, and that's been an issue for Mississippi State this season. His teams have been able to run on them. You know, Mississippi State has gone 115 consecutive weeks inside the AP Top 25. Longest run in program history. That could be in peril come Monday. Yeah. Jackson drew two, now trying to go one-on-one, -on -one. met a wall and still able to finish, making five of five in the second half. There is help coming from the middle and she spun into Boston and still finished. Another whistle, like how often have we seen South Carolina foul in the paint this game? Rakia Jackson, the help was coming the middle side, so she spun back. Aaliyah Boston, one of the best shot blockers in the game, met her, but she still finished it. Well, Rakia Jackson has done a really nice job this season, but she's getting more and more defensive attention as the season goes on. Leads the team in scoring, but she said, I've really been trying to work through that in practice, that her numbers are going down because of all of that attention. She said, I've been asking my practice players to really give me good looks. They practice against guys, and she said, they get up under me. They foul me hard. It does get frustrating, but she's learning how to play through that, and we're seeing it tonight. She gets a lot of attention, but she's finding a way to score. Jackson with 13 points, 11 in the second half. Meanwhile, the free throw line, big factor in this game. South Carolina, 18 of 20 from the line. Mississippi State, 4 of 10. 
It's out of bounds off of Jackson. And it's going to be South Carolina basketball. The crowd, and there is a limited one in Starksville, obviously thought that last hit Boston. Boston working the block. Amir put it on the deck. Good hands by Matharu on the steal. Taylor stepped out of bounds, and Mississippi State turns it over for a 14th time. We were talking to Nikki McCray Penson. She was saying how, you know, her team has to learn how to play hard and play a certain speed for 40 minutes because they have had bursts in certain games where they've played three good quarters, and then the last quarter, the team has come from behind to win. So even here, when you're down 18, you still want to have that consistent effort and that consistent focus for the last seven minutes of the game. Ami here forces it up. No, another offensive rebound and another foul against Mississippi State on a follow from South Carolina. This time, Lily Grissett is going to shoot. It's really interesting when you look at the stats. South Carolina with 14 offensive rebounds, 12 second chance points off of those. And Mississippi State has 11 offensive rebounds, only three second chance points off of there. South Carolina did a much better job going right back up or getting fouled when they go up. And South Carolina is taking advantage at the line. You see their edge on the glass. Offensive rebound, second chance points. And they are 19 of 21 from the line. They get 19 of 22. They have a 15 point edge at the free throw line right now. It's a 19 point game. Carter, nice touch. Jessica Carter in double figures now. Cooks and Carter both have four fouls for Mississippi State. And Boston's going to get called for one there as she was lurching over Carter. Six points, 12 rebounds, three fouls now for Aaliyah Boston, who has had her minutes limited a bit. Just 22 of them so far tonight. Zaya Cook, Destiny Henderson leading the way with 32 and 31 minutes respectively for South Carolina. Well, that's the thing with South Carolina. When your second leading scorer it has not having a huge night in terms of points, it doesn't matter. You still have a big lead on a pretty good team. They have such terrific balance on the offensive end. Zaya Cook, tonight's been a really good night for her. Saxton Grissett also in double figures. Yeah, if you're going against South Carolina, you want to limit Aaliyah Boston, but <laughs> that doesn't guarantee that you're going to even be in the game. Tharu got fouled by Boston. That'll be number four on Aaliyah Boston, and Batharu is going to shoot two. <laughs> Aaliyah Boston giving the official the stank guy on that one, but I thought she did. I thought she got Batharu on the arm. So we'll see if Mississippi State here with 5.46 to go in the fourth quarter, can make up any kind of ground with Boston out of this game now with the four fouls. Mississippi State now just four of 11 from the line. You heard Rebecca tell you earlier they are 273rd in Division I when it comes to free throw shooting, shooting it at under 65%. And it's tough to come back in games when you miss opportunities like that. Cook just creeping through the lane and reverse laying it home. Hey, 
I like how crisp the audio is in this game. You can hear a lot of the conversation, the chatter coming from the benches, coming from the floor. I mean, even that last time you heard someone from South Carolina's side, they're up 19 as they're going back on defense yell, we need a stop. <laughs> If it's a player, you know Don Staley is feeling like, I've done my job. Yes. <laughs> I think it was coming from the sideline. <laughs> Who wins the specs contest tonight? Don Staley or Sue Bird in studio? Oh, good question. I think oh, Dawns are, Dawns have some, they got some body to them. You see that? Yeah, I do. But I, but I, I think Sue's because they have the gold rim, you okay. know? So I'm going Sue. But this is like choosing between rubies and diamonds. Right. The, the eyewear is off the charts for both. Four fifty to go in this fourth quarter. A 19-point South Carolina lead. Poised to jump up. The AP Top 25 poll on Monday after NC State and UConn have both lost tonight. Do you think there'd be a good chance South Carolina will find themselves number two behind Louisville come Monday? We will see, though. Big matchup on Monday on ESPN that we'll have for you between NC State and South Carolina. Louisville with a 16-point lead in the, late in the second quarter right now against North Carolina. So, yeah, you would expect that to hold their number one ranking. Another offensive rebound here for South Carolina. They are a plus 12 on the glass in this game. Anderson connects on a jumper. Just the third field goal of the game for Destiny Henderson. I mean, South Carolina is shooting just 39% as a team. They're one of 12 from three, but they've dominated the glass. They've gotten out in transition, and they've gotten to the line frequently. And when they've gotten to the line, they've converted. And they've played suffocating defense against Mississippi State as Carter shows off the post game. Set can't hit. Another offensive rebound from Victoria Saxton. And that was an impressive pullback. A double-double for Saxton tonight. I love Tolly telling the story of Dawn Staley talking about Saxton and saying she's motherly to our team. She's one of the captains. Aaliyah Boston. You see, Frakia Jackson can build off of what she's done in the second half tonight. As Jackson now with 15 points, 13 of them in the second half will step aside. 2.24 to go. South Carolina in control. Zaya Cook has broken out this evening. And Saxton has been a monster on the glass. Well, a couple of big upsets tonight. Virginia Tech in overtime. Asia Shepard putting up 28. They take down NC State, hand them their first loss, and then UConn, a last gasp attempt from Avina Westbrook, won't go. And Arkansas hands UConn its first loss of the season. And so, number two and number three both have a loss. South Carolina primed to move up as they are on the brink of improving to 13-1. And, and a reminder that Louisville, the number one team in the nation at 15-0, will face NC State on Monday night on ESPN. Rebecca Holly and I will have that call. Elisa Kunain, we hope the terrific center for NC State will be back for that game. She has not played.
in their last couple of games, still in COVID protocol. Jumper goes down for Destiny Littleton. All cosmetic at this point. South Carolina with a 21-point lead. 2-10 to go in the fourth. Corner three, way off, the put back, no good. And South Carolina has played their patented defense all night long. Mississippi State has struggled to score times this season. They have not been able to find a rhythm for any sort of consistent set of possessions on the offensive end. And they have not been able to clean up the defensive glass against South Carolina or keep South Carolina off the line. Hey, we will have a full day of college hoops Saturday culminating with these two SEC Big 12 Challenge games on ESPN and the app. Number 15, Kansas squares off against number 18, Tennessee in Knoxville at 6 Eastern, 5 Central. And then we head to Rupp Arena for number 5, Texas and Kentucky. We've only met twice in their story history, both Wildcat wins in 1993 and 2014. Both games are sonic blockbusters. On the drive, that one will go, plus the foul. For Jemiah Mingo Young, she'll have a chance for three. The bench is being empty. Rebecca, what has stood out to you most about the way South Carolina has been playing of late? Just that they've been able to get great performances from a variety of people. You know, Zaya Cook started out this season great, then Aaliyah Boston has really picked it up during the course of conference play. Destiny Henderson has had her nights. I mean, they are very talented. They've got you know, a couple players, uh, Grissette in particular, recently coming in off the bench who have been able to give them good production and again defensively just how good and smothering their defense can be thompson comes in and hits the three 50 seconds left on a running clock here in this fourth And an offensive foul against Mississippi State. Rebecca, how about for Mississippi State? You know, where they go from here and how they try and find their footing as they move deeper into this season. Well, you think that they're searching a little bit right now. They've had some losses recently, changes in the starting lineup. Nikki McRae talked to us about, you know, establishing the culture there and, uh, and the energy that she needs every day in practice from all of her players. So. It'll be interesting to see how kind of they weather the next couple of weeks. Just a slight differential between the game and shot clock. I got you back, I got you back. I got you back. Straight up. South Carolina with their suffocating defense takes care of Mississippi State 75 52 the final the good friends Nikki McCray Penson and Dawn Staley wave goodbye to one another the first time facing each other as head coaches in a regular season game and Dawn Staley takes the first meeting 75-52, the final score. 21 straight road wins now for South Carolina and 27 straight SEC wins for South Carolina. Big performance tonight from Zaya Cook. Yeah, really good to see Zaya Cook be able to get it going on the offensive end of the floor. She was looking for her shot, looking to create, finally able to get one to drop from deep. 
got to the free throw line as well, creating on the offensive end. A player who's had some struggles lately scoring, but able to find the bucket here today. Let's check in now with Holly Rowe. Zaya Cook, really great tonight. 19 points for you. And, you know, you had gone through a stretch in the season where it didn't seem like it was coming naturally or easily. What has changed for you with another great performance tonight? Uh, nothing really changed. I've just been trying to continue to do the things that I was doing in practice. Um, just not trying to get high with the highs and balance everything out for myself. And then it actually worked out for me tonight. How did you keep that faith in yourself and keep your confidence going that you could impact the game for your team? Uh, actually, my teammates and my coach, you know, they helped me out. They told me who I was, told me what I can do, and they kept me motivated. Times when I wanted to get down, um, I also had my parents by my side, so it helped me out a lot. I thought Coach Staley did something really great for you. She put the ball in your hands more. How did that help to be bringing the ball up the floor and kind of get a running start at things to be more active? It actually helps a lot. You know, the defense put a lot of emphasis on me. So if I had the ball in my hands, it gives my teammates the opportunity to get open shots. So whatever we got to do to win, that's what we're going to do. Well, thank you so much, Zaya Cook, coming off a great game tonight with 19 points. Thank you so much. Brian, back to you. All right, Holly, all right. Zaya, 27 straight SEC win for South Carolina. For our producer, Kerry Callahan, our director, Jimmy Platt, and Rebecca Lobo and Holly Rowe, I'm Ryan Rucco. Superb! Coach Andy Landers and me coming up to break it all down on the other side. South Carolina, a 21st straight road win.